So uh, welcome back again in the third part of the uh, this lecture series on question answering system. In this uh, third part, we are going to discuss two models for question answering system. And they are based on deep neural networks. So first one is the LSTM based and second one is the BERT model. Okay, so let us look at these models in detail. So just a quick recap. Uh, so sequence to sequence model with attention is the model we are going to use. So in short, uh, those who are not familiar with, uh, I suggest you can uh, take a look or read some blog on sequence to sequence model with attention. In short, this is an LST model where some attention mechanism is applied. Uh, uh, so here is a picture in which we are feeding the source sentence, the origin input sentence. It can be even the paragraph. And in the decoder side, so this part is called encoder. And this part is called decoder. Okay. And what happens is that in, in order to predict uh, the sentence, uh, the words in the decoder, what we do is generally we compute the attention scores and then attention distribution is used to weight the, uh, weight these uh, hidden representation of each word in the encoder side. So that's like very high level description of the attention mechanism. Um, you can take a look uh, how attention is computed. Okay, uh, to, uh, any, any uh, nice blog or you can read the original paper where attention is uh, described. Okay, or, or you can also look at TensorFlow library where they uh, describe the attention mechanism in more detail. So, um, so by DAF, bi-directional attention flow model is like one of the popular question answering system back in 2017. Uh, so here is the architecture which you see on the screen and there are a few of uh, important layers in this one which, which we'll uh, you know describe in more detail. So first we have three embedding layers in which the input data is uh, feed in in the form of the character embedding as well as the word embedding and the phrase embedding. Then we have this attention flow layer uh, where we compute the attention uh, from query to context and context to query, followed by this modeling layer where we are using BioLSTM to model the interaction uh, between the words in the context. And then we have this output layer we, where we predict the start and end uh, locations uh, which contain the answer. Okay, so now we are going to discuss this model in more detail so that the whole uh, description or explanation is clearer. Okay, so let us look at the the BIDAF model encoding the input layer. So remember in the question answer system, uh, especially the reading comprehension uh, kind of question, we have uh, the context and the query. So what we are going to do is we are going to create an embedding by concatenating the word embedding and the character embedding. Okay. So word embedding is obtained by globe a. Uh, globe a is like again distributed representation of the words in the form of a vector and then character embedding obtained by cnn okay and uh, what we do is that for each wo word in the context and uh, for each word in the query we concatenate the word and the character embedding as you see here on the right side we are let's say the word is chn we get the word embedding through globe and we have these characters in the chn we get the character embedding through cnn and we concatenate them right so here and after the concatenation the embedding is represented using this uh, eci similarly so this is the embedding for context and, and the same thing is repeated for query words okay and after that these embeddings are fed to the bidirectional lstm to produce the contextual embedding for both the context and the query. So these are the equations for the by LSTM for the forward LSTM and the backward LSTM and then they are concatenated. Okay. And then uh, we have this attention uh, layer in this model. So we are going to run uh, compute the attention from context to query. So basically what it means is that for each word in the context so let's say the word is Barack, then Obama. And we are looking for which word in the query it is most closest to. For example, the question was who leads the United States and context is Barack Obama is the president of the USA. So if you see the, these words, Barack Obama, they are 
related to who because if you look at the answer the question is who leads the united states and answer who will be typically related to barack obama and leads is basically related to president and united states related to usa okay so the query to context uh, attention basically tries to find this similarity between the each uh, between the words in the context and the query okay so similarly the we compute the attention in the other way around from query each word in the query uh, we need to find which word in the uh, context this is more closest to right so here uh, the two attention uh, uh, mechanisms are in a more uh, uh, mathematical way so let us say we get these embedding for query and context word so for every question and context word we formulate this similarity score by concatenating the query embedding uh, context embedding query embedding and uh, you know element wise dot product of these two embeddings and then concatenating them so you'll get a really big vector and that vector is passed through a dense layer that's what this wsim is implying so you basically multiply with a weight vector to compute this similarity score SIG, okay? And um, so context to, to query attention is basically formulated using this similarity score. So what you do, you uh, is basically you have the similarity score vector. So if you sum that vector, uh, in fact, it's not a vector; it's a matrix. Uh, in that matrix, if you sum along j which is nothing but uh, the uh, the query okay so over each query word if you sum it up you will get the context to query attention uh, these are the weights and what you do is basically you take the weighted uh, summation of the query words to get this context to to query attention vector okay and in order to find the query to context attention, the formula is little different. Here, we are looking for which context words are relevant to some question word. So first we compute the max score out of uh, for each uh, question word, we are looking for which word achieve the highest uh, uh, score, Wh which, which, uh, which query word has the highest affinity to which word in the, with some word in the question, the passage. Right. So once we do that, then we'll perform the soft max over i. And then once you get this uh, uh, these attention weight, then you can go ahead and uh, weight the context words to form your vector v. And then once you have this vector v, the final output of this uh, attention layer is basically formulated using these equations. Okay. And then lastly, we have this modeling layer. So what we do in the modeling way, we pass G to another two layer by LSTM. So attention layer, remember, is modeling interaction between the query and the context. And modeling layer, the role of this layer is to model the interaction between the words in the context, right? So what you do, you pass the output of the previous layer to the by LSTM to get this MI, okay, which encodes the uh, interaction between the context word. And then finally, the output layer predict the start and end positions. So you basically pass MI, you concatenate MI with GI and pass through softmax layer. That will be your PS start. In order to predict the end token, right? Then uh, the way you formulate that thing is basically you pass your MI through another by LSTM. And then that output of that is actually combined with GI and then you apply the softmax layer to predict the end position of the answer span. So, and then once you have these two distribution, you can go ahead and optimize the log uh, P, which is basically optimizing the log probability, right? log likelihood of these distributions. Okay, so let us not go into too much detail. Uh, maybe some of these things are uh, not uh, easy to digest for some of you. So what you can do, uh, you can look at the bile STM and attention uh, articles where they describe in more detail so that you understand them so once you understand them you can come back and try to see this this whole thing okay then let us see how what the performance of bidef model on the squared so if you see on the right hand side we have a performance of various models on the squared data and you'll see that bidef achieves the f1 score of around 
uh, 77.3 and over the time you can clearly see that there are other models which are better than Bita and human performance you see that it is around 91.2 f1 okay and you can also do some ambulation study in order to understand uh, the role of different context to query attention you will see that if you remove that performance decreases if you remove the query to context attention performance decreases and so on right so in order to assess uh, why we are doing this you just uh, remove that thing and measure the performance okay yeah and if you want to see you know the attention in action you can actually plot the attention weights right so this is the question where did super bowl 50 take place and you will see that the particular each word in the question is focusing certain word in the passage right so where is more closely related to at stadium levy santa so this is where word is more related to the location okay the venue and so on similarly super bowl is more closely related to super 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 bowl 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 and so on right so that, that's how you use attention that basically means that uh, how to establish the relation between the words in the context and the uh, uh, query okay so having talked about uh, by lstm based mod model uh, for question answering now let us go toward the bird based architecture for reading comprehension right so uh, as you know that bird is a deep learning model uh, by google and it is a deep bi-directional transformer encoder pre-trained on large amount of text so this is basically a deep neural network based on transformer architecture and this model is trained on wikipedia and book corpus for two tasks one task was this mass language modeling and second task is for next sentence prediction basically once you one you have uh, once you have these these models such as bert and roberta so what people generally do is that uh, before you know uh, before releasing to the community for public use they will actually pre-train them for some tasks so some two tasks were there mass language modeling in which you will hide some word in the input sentence and you'll ask the model to predict that hidden word and then the next sentence prediction task you will ask the model to predict the next sentence given the previous sentence okay so there are various uh, versions of word one has 12 layers and 110 million parameters second has 24 layers and 330 million parameters so depending on how much RAM you can you have, you can load any of these two models, right? So once you have these pre-trained models, so that is for public use, you can go ahead and use them or fine tune these models for particular tasks you are interested in. Let's say you are interested in uh, question answering. So you can take any pre-trained model uh, from TensorFlow or PyTorch library, and then you can uh, use uh, fine tune that model on different, different data sets for solving different, different problems, such as named entity recognition, natural language inference and so on okay so let us look at how BERT is used for reading comprehension so in the BERT the input is fed uh, in the format of uh, 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 what you see here on the screen so we have the question word then there's a save token and then there's a reference uh, words in the reference on the context okay and CLS token is a token which designate the start of the sentence the first token okay and then we get basically create the embedding of these words in a, the concatenation form and then there is again if you know in the bird we have this position embedding and segment embedding so these three embeddings are you know uh, 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 combined together and they are fed to the different layers of the bird model and if you know in the bird there are like you know different uh, layers uh, like 12 layers are encoders so are there in the bird model so this whole input is passed through different layers in order to ca capture the context right in a more uh, meaningful way so this yeah so that input passes through different encoder layers and eventually uh, the last layer actually uh, you know predicts the start and end uh, uh, locations in the passage and then you optimize again similar to the uh, lstm based model you optimize the loss uh, which is based on log uh, log likelihood okay um 
yeah so if you see the performance of the bird based model you will see that um yeah so these bird based model so human performance is around 91.2 right your yeah, phone score and if you see the performance of excelnate robert and bird albert they have surpassed the human score right they are larger than your yeah, phone score larger than the human performance right so that that's what i wanted to highlight that uh, you know current state of the art bird based model they have achieved uh, performance better than the human can score okay so this this is what i wanted to highlight if you are interested in uh, you should read some blog on transformer and bird architecture because these are the state of the art in deep learning so if you understand let's say self supervised learning and this uh, you know multi head attention which was proposed in this uh, transformer architecture which is the building block of the bird model then you will understand many of these uh, these details nitty gritty details right so with that i will stop here and in case if you have any question um then you can um, uh, email me uh, or yeah that would help okay thanks